sacred is an act and not a thing so you can treat the bible as sacred totally legitimate or we think it's more fun and more authentic to who we are to treat harry potter as sacred so that is what we are doing um and we think a lot of people accidentally already treat harry potter as sacred so we're trying to formalize that through community and through very specific ways of reading and practices which is what separates us from just sort of a fan club or a book club we gather people together and we use very traditional religious methodology in order to read Harry Potter as if it was the Bible or the Quran or any other number of sacred texts. I have been sort of a non-practicing, like nebulous, spiritual, but with no real denomination or like faith practice kind of person. Um, you know, the, a sort of multi-faith approach to any conversation is something that has always interested me and I was really, really excited <laughs> to turn into <laughs> Harry Potter because I, you know, I've, I've always felt a really deep connection with a lot of the messages of the books and um, and so that's, that's really what kept me coming back is right from the first meeting. Um, it felt like like I was being given an opportunity to connect with something that I already had a lot of emotional attachment to. Yeah, message. because I don't come at it from a place of skepticism. Yeah. I come at it from a place of warmth, I guess. Like, yeah. you know, I like this book and I feel familiar, kind of like intimate is a weird word, but like intimate with the characters almost. Yeah. And so it's like I am a lot more open to that than like a Bible study. I wouldn't be open to that. I think what Harry Potter offers is, you know, it's a wonderful story that a lot of people already love and are familiar with. Um, and there's a real joy in rereading it. You discover all sorts of details in the plot, but also unexpected ways that it might speak to us in our own lives. Um, so we've had some really wonderful discussions, you know, just choosing one paragraph and reading it very closely and reflecting on it in silence and then sharing with a partner. And all, like, all sorts of unexpected um, ideas and reflections come through the text. So we're really excited about how does this text speak to us today um, in the same way that you know, a, a religious person might um, read uh, you know, a religious text. We have a wonderful group coming of people who are secular people who are religious. It's a real mix in that sense. And, and people are bringing all sorts of interesting perspectives. So uh, it's a lot of fun. So like the idea of reading this as a sacred text is like interesting, but when you're doing it, you're just like, oh my god, that felt that in my soul. Yeah, I mean that's why I'm here basically is to like try to be a better person. You know, this presents an opportunity to really examine our own lives, not only examine the book, but also look at, you know, who we are and try and, you know, live our lives a little bit more intentionally. The other idea behind it is that the more time that you spend with the text, the more gifts it will give you. And so that you're never going to conquer the text. Um, and we have people who have read this book dozens and dozens of times. And I think that, I mean, even they will hear from them, but even they are still getting things out of the books by reading it in this way, because it's a humble way to read a text. It's saying, no matter how much time I spend with you, if I spend more time, you are going to give me more gifts, which is an exciting thing to practice, because if we see the world that way, the world becomes a much more inspiring and exciting place, which is what we're trying to practice toward. Mm -hmm.